Stretching back at least to the time of the ancient Greeks, mankind has shown a concern with finding the proper method to gain knowledge about the natural world. Over the past several centuries, one discipline, namely science, has risen to a position of dominance in the pursuit of such knowledge. The ascension of science has in part been a result of the increasing ability of scientific theories to make sense of phenomena which for a long time were explained by appealing to the supernatural. As science has shown an ability to explain more and more phenomena, a new belief concerning how humans can properly obtain knowledge has emerged. This belief, commonly referred to as scientism, is broadly speaking the claim that science is our only source of knowledge about the world. Scientism really began to see increased adoption around the turn of the 20th century, with groups such as the logical positivists being influential in its rise. In his article Science in Modern Culture, or the Meaning of Meaninglessness, Eric Weil defined scientism as a view which maintains that only what can be established scientifically is true, objective, and valid everywhere and for everybody. In this lecture, we are going to provide a critique of scientism. We will begin our critique by distinguishing between faith and reason, and look at whether faith plays any role in the operation of science. We will then examine one of the presuppositions of science in an attempt to determine whether scientists themselves accept knowledge about the natural world from non-scientific sources. And finally, we will examine whether the claim made by proponents of scientism is actually self-refuting. Before we begin, it is important to clarify what we mean by science. Science is commonly used to designate both a body of knowledge and a set of methods used to obtain knowledge about the natural world. For the purpose of this lecture, we are concerned with the second designation, that being the use of the scientific method. The Oxford English Dictionary defines this method as consisting in systematic observation, measurement, and experiment, and the formulation, testing, and modification of hypotheses. So the view we will be critiquing is whether the methods of science are the only means of obtaining knowledge concerning the natural world. It is often believed that one of the reasons for the great success of science is that scientists, in attempting to explain nature, take nothing on faith. However, is such an assertion correct? Is it true that scientists, in their investigations into nature, make no use of faith? To answer this question, it will be helpful to distinguish between obtaining knowledge by faith and obtaining knowledge by our reason. The historian of science, Lawrence Principe, distinguishes the two means in the following manner. Faith is a method of arriving at knowledge claims by simple belief, by assumption, or by suspended disbelief. The exercise of reason takes us from premises to conclusions by the means of argument and logic. So based on these definitions, is it true that science makes no use of faith in the attainment of knowledge? Or rather, are there certain assumptions scientists take for granted, whether knowingly or not, which are based on faith? When one examines the scientific method, it appears that scientists must in fact accept certain propositions on faith, before they can even commence a scientific inquiry. These propositions, which can be called the presuppositions of science, include such things as a belief in the validity of sense experience and a belief in what is called the uniformity or regularity of nature. Assenting to the regularity of nature means that one believes that the laws of nature that scientists discover operate not only at the time and place where the scientist performs the experiments, but everywhere and at all times. Now the important point in relation to scientism is that these assumptions or presuppositions cannot be proven true through the use of the scientific method. Rather, one must assume the truth of these presuppositions just to begin a scientific investigation. For example, if one denies the validity of sense experience, then how can one trust their observations of the results of an experiment? Or alternatively, if one denies that there is a regularity in the operation of the natural world, then how can a scientist ever hope to discover a law of nature? Abraham Kaplan reveals the necessity of the scientific presuppositions in his book The Conduct of Inquiry. In it he writes, Nowhere in science do we start from scratch. There is only one place which we can start, that is from where we are. Science is no miraculous creation out of nothing, no spontaneous generation of knowledge from ignorance. When presuppositions are denied a logical status, we remain mired in skepticism. 
Examining in more detail one of these presuppositions will provide us with a good example of a proposition about the natural world which scientists accept as true but which is not discoverable by the operation of science. The presupposition we will discuss is a variant of the belief in the regularity of nature called the species-individual structure of nature. Andrew Van Melsen nicely explains the meaning of this presupposition in his book The Philosophy of Nature, where he writes, Science presupposes that different individual material things and events can be classified according to certain species. What he means is that for science to operate it must assume that the individual things in the natural world can be grouped together into what he calls species based on their common characteristics. So for example all the different pieces of wood in nature make up the species of wood, while all the individual droplets of water make up the species of water. And furthermore, science must then assume that individuals of the same species exhibit the same behavior under a given set of circumstances. So, for example, scientists assume that all pieces of wood can burn and that all droplets of water can freeze. Now, it should be recognized that this presupposition tells us something about the world, namely, that individuals of the same species exhibit the same behavior. However, the truth of such a proposition or the source of this knowledge does not and cannot come from the use of the scientific method. This is because before the scientific method can even be started, this proposition must of necessity be accepted as true, or as Van Melsen says, For science does not have any choice about whether or not to accept the presupposition of the species' individual structure. It must accept it because, otherwise, any classification, induction, and gathering of experience in certain laws would be entirely impossible, for there would be an infinite series of experiences without any possibility of connecting one experience with another. Thus, by accepting such a proposition, scientists are implicitly accepting a truth about the structure of the world which is not obtained by the operation of science. Some may attempt to counter the claim that the presuppositions of science are based on faith or some form of pre-scientific experience by positing instead that they are proved true by the success of science. However, success and truth are not analogous terms and the success of science in no way proves the truth of its presuppositions. An example will help to clarify why this is the case. Tycho Brahe, a 16th century astronomer, developed a model of the solar system in which the Sun and Moon orbited the Earth while the planets Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn orbited the Sun. This model was extremely successful at predicting the observed motions of the planets, however, it obviously would not have been correct for one to use the success of this model to make the further claim that it was a true depiction of the solar system. For as we now know, the Sun does not orbit the Earth. To finish our critique, we will briefly examine whether the claim of scientism is self-refuting. Proponents of scientism claim that knowledge of the world can only be discovered through the operation of science. However, this very claim asserts a truth about the world, namely, that it is structured in such a way that only science can provide us with knowledge of it. But this truth was not obtained via the scientific method. So how can one maintain the truth of the claim without at the same time contradicting or refuting themselves? So to conclude, while science is an indispensable tool in our pursuit of knowledge concerning the natural world, the claim made by the proponents of scientism seems untenable. Science must accept as true certain principles about the structure of nature prior to undertaking any scientific investigation. And these principles, or the presuppositions of science, are themselves not discovered utilizing the methods of science. Furthermore, by asserting that only science can provide us with knowledge of the world, scientism puts forth a claim that is itself not derived from the operation of science, and therefore puts forth a self-refuting claim.